Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name is Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP WTA changes for the week in the rankings and also the race to the finals, which is starting to take a little bit of shape now. Now, we obviously had Indian Wells over the last couple of weeks. That's the only tournament that we've had over the last few weeks. Let's go have a look at the past champions before we get to the rankings. So having a look at the two champions, starting with the women, we had Igish Fiontek. She defeated Maria Sakkari 6 4 6 1 to lift her second trophy in a row at Masters 1000 level or WTA 1000 level. And over on the men's side, we had Taylor Fritz defeating Rafa Nadal in the final, breaking the streak of Nadal. 6-3-7-6 in that one to lift his first ATP 1000 trophy. So it's a big week for the younger players this week and they all got boosts in the rankings. Let's start with the changes to the WTA rankings this week because in the absence of Ash Barty, we had some big changes through the top 10. Barty stays at number one. She's well ahead of second place. But Iga Sviantec, she's gone up to a career high ranking number two after winning Indian Wells, with Zachary going up to number three, which is also a career high ranking for her, pushing down both Krejcikova and Sabalenka, who failed to do well at Indian Wells. And in Krejcikova's case, she didn't even play Indian Wells. But Dossa goes up to number six after making the semifinals of Indian Wells, and Contabate goes down to number seven after failing to do well at Indian Wells. Pliskova at eight, Muguruza at nine, and Jabor rounds out the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the race to the WTA Finals, and we have a change at the top. Sviantek, she takes top spot over Barty after winning Indian Wells. She's made up a lot of points over the last couple of weeks with winning Doha and Indian Wells back to back. And with Barty not playing, she goes down to number two. And Zachary, after making the final of Indian Wells, she goes up to number three, four spots higher than last week, pushing down Contabate to number four. Keys goes up one spot to number five with Daniel Collins going down two spots to number six. Badossa, with having a good week at Indian Wells, she goes up two spots to seven. Ostapenko's dropped down three spots to number eight. Halep's gone up one spot to nine. And Krejcikova drops down two spots to number 10 after not playing at Indian Wells at all. Heading over to the men's rankings now, and we have some big changes to the top 10 with Novak Djokovic retaking his top spot, taking Daniel Medvedev down to number two. After Medvedev failed to make the quarterfinals, so we've got Djokovic at one, Medvedev at two, and Rafa, after making the finals of Indian Wells, he goes up to number three, with Zverev down to number four. City Pats at five, Berrettini at six, Rublev at seven, Rude at eight, Oje Eliassime at nine, and Hubi Hercatch, he gets back into the top 10 ahead of his title defense in Miami, pushing Yannick Sinner out of the top 10, once again. Having a look at the race to the finals now, and Rafa, despite losing the final of Indian Wells, he stays at number one, with Medvedev at number two. And Taylor Fritz, after winning Indian Wells, he's gone up 14 spots to number three in the race, pushing Ali Asim down to number four. Rublev's at five. City Pass has gone down to number six, two spots lower than last week. And Carlos Alcaraz, he's gone up five spots to number seven after the semifinals of Indian Wells, pushing Berrettini down to number eight, Chapo down to number nine, and Batista Ragu goes down to number 10 to round out the top 10 for this week with Nori and Schwartzman falling out of the top 10 completely for the race to the finals. So there you have it. There are so many changes to both the top 10 for the men and the women, not to mention the race to the finals. They're starting to take a bit of shape now that we've done a Grand Slam, we've had a Grand Slam, and also we've had a Masters 1000 series or a couple for the women if you're looking at uh, Doha and Indian Wells. After Miami, it's going to really take some shape before the clay court season. But let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most shocked about being in the top 10? For me personally, Taylor Fritz. Being in the top 10, what a week he had and what a couple of weeks he had. Beating Rafa in the final, man, I did not expect that. And he's into the top 10, well-deserved at number eight. But let me know down in the comments below who are you most shocked about either being in the top 10 or maybe not being in the top 10 this week.